So for our ocular motor system, we need to talk a little bit about anatomy. So what's the perfect purpose of our ocular motor system? And it's to produce eye movements to direct the fovea towards an object of interest. So what are we looking at? What are we, what are we following? What are we tracking? And so involved in that are six extraocular muscles that rotate the eye. And so we look at all of the function of all of those muscles to make sure that there's not one that maybe the pathway or the, the signal going from the brain hasn't been functionally affected. Those six extraocular muscles um, are divided into three pairs with complementary actions. So we can't say that one is in isolation because we have things moving um, or acting in conjunction with each other. And so the cr three cranial nerves that control those eye muscles are cranial nerve three, or ocular motor, cranial nerve four, or the trochlear nerve, and then cranial nerve six, which is the abducens. And when we get to the ocular motor exam, we're gonna look at all of those eye movements. Sight versus vision, and I know that I've talked about sight versus vision, but a lot of the times these, these patients will be screened, like, can you read, what's your, what's your visual acuity? Is it 2020, is it 2010, is it 2050? But vision is a lot more involved than just that 2020, and it's how the eyes are coordinated, how they're moving, and how they're processing that information. And so we really need to make sure that we're looking at all of those extraocular, ocular motor movements in order to make sure that we're not missing something. And it's not just the eye chart, although we do use the eye chart um, when we do some of the vestibular testing. Vision is the dominant sense. I think all of us can agree that the first thing that we do is use our vision, um, especially on the field, in sport, where we have multitudes of different vision that we look at. So we look at our immediate vision and our central vision of what's happening right in front of us, but then we have an inherent awareness in our periphery of what's going on. And so there was actually a recent study that showed that vision performance or visual training on higher level elite athletes actually showed a decrease in the incidence of concussion only because they were more peripherally aware so they could almost anticipate or see things coming at them and then react and move out of the way. It's pretty complicated, but you may, um, you may see things like the DynaVision or the, the D2 is the newest version of that. And that's more of a visual reaction speed timing thing that you can actually do training to look at reaction time visually as well as look at peripheral awareness and how quick can you respond to things in your periphery and then get out of the way. So we've, we've got some frontiers coming ahead of us and to see where this, this develops and goes to. So the biggest thing with vision is that optic nerve, which we start, so that allows us to see, um, has over a million nerve fibers per eye that provides pathways for visual information processing. And to say that is a lot, if we think about a million nerve fibers. And so if we think back to the example of the, the jello shaking, well, though, and the brain is shaking, those pathways are going to be disturbed. And that's typically why we see, um, if you've ever watched an athlete who's been concussed, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll close their eyes tightly or they'll shake their head like they're trying to clear their vision because vision is oftenly involved in that 30 to 60% of time. And there has been studies that actually show increase of those numbers.